Part three. So we just explained the meaning of Al Baqarah one fifteen. Which the meaning of the verse is that because again this is requires what explanation. We would say in Arabic it's called tafsir. That it's referring to the direction of the qibla that you can face in whatever direction for the when you're praying what sunnah prayer while riding on the back of what an animal. Yeah. No. So it has very restricted meaning and it's distant from taking the word what waja literally, which would mean face. And this would contradict even the Wahhabi belief if you're saying wherever you turn is the face of Allah according to them, if you took it literally, but the Wahhabis believe Allah is literally situated above us. So they can't take the verse what literally. literally. Now the next verse, and this is still dealing with the term what? what? Just to show you that you cannot take all the verses literally. Mm -hmm. Again, if you don't, if you have the right belief, or if you came across the verse, you would say, I don't, I know I can't go by the literal meaning, what does it mean? So you would ask. But the Wahhabi, because he starts from the principle of saying you have to take all the verses literally, even that he's what, lying, even he doesn't do it. But he starts further, his first principle is that God is a shape and a form with a size situated somewhere. So his, his foundational belief is invalid. As we mentioned, what was our first principle? Allah absolutely does not need or resemble the creation. They'll say, well, that you're coming with philosophy. But we said this is from the Quran. <laughs> Allah doesn't need or resemble the creations. And it what fits with the, yeah. intellect. With the intellect. We're not saying the intellect comes before the revelation. But we say there's nothing in the revelation that contradicts the yeah. intellect. Verse 2, the next one. Uh, so if you took this verse literally, the first word is kundu. And this word, if one took it literally, and the Wahhabis say you have to take it what? Literally. literally. And then you, they mention this word, it means every. And according to the Wahhabis, Because again, their methodology doesn't what add up. Alhamdulillah, the methodology of the Sunnis, the real Sunnis, is perfect. So the word kullu, they say means every. And according to the Wahhabis, they, they say, with no exception. They say, Qul means every, with no exception. This is what they claim. Do they stick to their method? No. Mm -hmm. They try to force it on us, but they don't even practice what they They say, you have to take that literally. They don't take it literally. When we give a non-literal meaning, they say you're distorting the verses of the Quran. No, we're not distorting. You are the one because you don't understand what befits Allah. Not only you, but the one. Mm -hmm. So let's, if we break this verse down word for word. So we said, Kullu means what? Everything. Kullu shay, everything. Halikun is annihilated. Illa, except wajha except his face. So if somebody took it literally, it would be saying in the hereafter, everything will be annihilated except the face of Allah. Hmm. But the Wahhabis, don't they think, don't they claim Allah has hands? Yes. They claim Allah has a shin? Yes. Hmm. They say Allah has what? Feet. Hmm. So if we took this verse literally, hmm. it would mean that according to their faulty, blasphemous, hmm. hideous belief, they would be saying Allah's hands would be annihilated. Allah's feet would be annihilated. No, Allah doesn't have these attributes. We're saying according to what they claim. Mm -hmm. According to their claim, Allah's feet would be annihilated. Allah's shin would be annihilated. You see? You see everything except It contradicts their belief. It contradicts their own belief. Mm -hmm. What the verse here means is the wajah here 
everything will be of no benefit except the good deeds that were done for the sake of Allah. Sometimes they'll say, do it li wajhillah for the, what? Say, literally being the face of Allah, but meaning for the sake of Allah. Nice. So what deeds will benefit the person in the hereafter? Only what the deeds that were done for, for the, the sake, sake of Allah. This is our meaning. This is one way the scholars explained it. But they did not say that wajah equals face. They did not say that. You follow? They gave it a non-literal meaning, mm -hmm. which is, fits with what? The proper belief. To say that all the deeds, what deeds are going to benefit the human being? It has to be have the right belief in the hereafter, in this life, to benefit in the hereafter. And, and whatever good de deeds that the Muslim did, did that, that he or she would have to do it for what reason? Sake of for the Allah. sake of Allah. That is all that will benefit. So you're not going to benefit the person who's going around showing off. He's doing apparently good deeds, but he's showing off. He doesn't get any work. Any reward. Uh -huh. So this is an explanation. But the scholars, they did not say that Allah has what? A face. face. They said that these verses, you explain them. If you don't know the meaning, then you just say what? Quiet. Quiet. You say, this is what the verse says, I don't know the meaning. I don't want to go into mention the specific meaning. I don't know. Because the scholars, on some of the verses, they have differences of opinions. But on this verse, I know two explanations, but neither of them means what? Face. Face. We let you one explanation. Because the scholar, because they know it, it, it cannot mean face because you go back to the first rule. Really? Allah does not, what? Allah absolutely does not need or resemble yes. the creation. So when you talk about a face, even if you say, but unlike ours, if it's not the front part of the head or something like that, then in reality it's not a what? Face. It's not a face. It, you, the what have you, you must mean something else. Because you'll say Allah has a face, but not, not like the creations. Well, if it's not this or something like this, in reality it would not be a what? Face. If you don't know what you're talking about, then just be what? Wow. Sign, silent, and no, Allah did not attribute, this is important, Allah did not attribute A, F, A, C, E to Himself. Because this is a what? English word. Allah is attributed with the term with the wajah. You follow? And the wajah, another meaning for this verse. It means everything will be annihilated except the dominion of Allah. Meaning that what will remain on the day of judgment, who is at Maliki Yawmid Deen, the one who is the owner of everything, Allah Ta'ala. In this world, people seem to have what? Dominion. Rulers and kings. I mean, they have an earthly dominion. But on the day of judgment, what does that mean? You follow? But all this, the scholars, although they disagreed on the interpretation, none of them said Allah has a what? face. Both meanings are befitting of Allah, or befitting for the verse. To say that everything will be annihilated, meaning you will not benefit except for what? The deeds that you did for the sake of Allah. Or to say everything will be annihilated except what? The dominion, the ownership of everything. Except that, and who has the ownership of everything? On the Day of Judgment, it's clear. In this life, we have atheists claim God doesn't even exist, and people who are proud of their property. On the Day of Judgment, it's clear Allah Ta'ala is the one who owns everything. So, so the point is that this term was not taken what literally to mean face, and in, and for sure F A C E is never attributed to Allah, and to claim that Allah has a face but not like ours, if it's not something, if it's not the front of the head, then it must mean what Allah alam what you mean, dude. Mm -hmm. But if you don't mean the front part of the head, you really don't mean a face, and if you don't know what the verse means, then be quiet. Say that Allah's attribute of wajah and the scholars are explained. But it does not mean the front of it. So is that clear, brothers? Let's just very quickly summarize this. So what we did do, we first mentioned, uh, we don't have it here, but let's write it out and show them quick. Alhamdulillah, because as Jundub ibn Abdullah said, we learned Iman before the what? Quran. So we mentioned principle one. You don't have to recopy. Oh, okay. Allah doesn't need or resemble the creations. The 
And what did we say was principle two? The, uh, the Quran does not contradict itself. So we talk about the Quran saying it doesn't contradict itself. And also, we can say it, we didn't mention it, but also the same can be for the hadith. The authentic hadith of the Prophet don't contradict the Quran. Okay. And the, the authentic hadith don't contradict each other. Okay. And number three, what was the, last, the third principle? Any verse that might give yeah. some people... So, let me, I'm sorry, this is kind of long, let's put non-literal mm -hmm. interpretation, which is what completely valid for obvious reasons, because you cannot say wherever you turn is the face of God, and the Wahhabi himself doesn't take it what literally. And the other verse, everything uh, will be annihilated except the face of Allah, if you took it literally by the Wahhabi methodology. Well, the Wahhabi believes Allah has hands and 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 uh, and feet and a shin. So according to them, they have to take that verse what literally. So then they're saying parts of God will be annihilated. Which, which is, all, is all kufr on top of kufr. But they don't even take it what literally. So this shows you that they're, they're, they're liars. They are liars. They're not just misguided and confused. They are liars. They are liars. Okay, طيب. let's finish up inshallah. So we're going to mention from the text the last two points inshallah. We already, this is from the text. But we're, we're explaining. You see, you have the text, and then you're what? Explain it. You don't need to take out the book, because this is just a couple of quick sections or so. So, the next section, well, we mentioned Allah is not a body or a spatial entity. Allah does not have a size and does not occupy space. And then the next section, which we already said, but just to, so we read it and get everything read from the book. Alhamdulillah, when you know the right aqeedah, how easy this is for a person to understand. When the person comes in starting thinking God is a body situated above the arsh, and then you start talking this way, then he will be so confused. Because he thinks that what we're doing, he claims or what have you will accuse us of denying the attributes of Allah. We don't deny them, but we don't accept their what? Interpretation. We don't deny them. We, we say, yeah, this is Allah's attributed with these attributes that the Wahhabis talk about, which they interpret as body parts. Some of them are not even attributes of Allah. But in general, we say, yes, Allah's attributed with wajah, yeah. but it's not a body part. Allah's attributed with yad, it's not a hand, for example. Don't take it literally. We don't take it literally. And we just saw that they themselves don't even want to take it. Can't, they, they can't take it. They will contradict. They will contradict their belief that God is situated above our hands. So the next section just mentions Allah does not need the creations, which we already mentioned. And this is mentioned in the Quran in Al Imran 96. Al Imran 96, or 97, depends on how Sometimes the Qur'an will have different numbers to it. So, we can double check. Let me just double check, inshallah. Allah does not, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ Which means Allah is not in need or is not needy of any of the creations. Remember we talked in the lesson about the name of Allah Al Ghani. Al Ghani means the one who is not in need. So Allah is not in need of any of the creations. Easy. Again, because you, you understood the right belief. And that goes back to all that we've been saying over and over. Allah doesn't Allah. resemble the creations. Allah doesn't need the creations. Allah is oneness. The, the oneness of Allah. Yeah, it's verse 97. I put 96, 97. Yeah, 97, 97. By yourself? Yeah? By yourself? 97, yeah. Okay. 97. So, 
If they understood Allah as one, they would understand Allah doesn't need the creations for the Yaqeen. They would under, but they don't understand that Allah is one. They don't understand. If they understood Allah was one, then they wouldn't think Allah has, has body parts and dimensions and all Y'all are keeping a man that Allah is one, that Allah don't remember any other creation that that'll keep you up, keep the red light on for a lot of things you hear about. People perpetrate that Allah have pod, body pod, mm-hmm. posture pod, mm-hmm. in a plate. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's helpful, brother. It's not it, brother. It's yeah. helpful. And, and then you just said it's not a subject you ever get tired of. Alhamdulillah. You hear it every day. Okay. And the last section, worship. The definition Islamically of worship. Worship. Which is the ultimate degree of submission. This is the ultimate degree of submission and surrender, you can say. And we'll continue on this topic next week briefly. But this is another area where the Wahhabis make big blunders. And what worship does not mean, brothers, just listen for a moment, please. Worship does not mean to love someone to honor someone. It does not mean to fear someone. Worship by itself does not mean to fear someone. Worship does not mean to call upon someone. So we'll, we'll talk more why we're saying that and the refute what the way I have to say. But just this is the definition of worship. Inshallah, so we'll mention what some of the scholars said about this next week. So, bi'ithnillah ta'ala, let's stop here. Walhamdulillah wa sallallahu ala rasul.